you know, the Bible says Satan entered Judas. And I racked my brain for days about how that could happen because I could understand a, a, a spirit entering a body. But if we're thinking these beings in terms of being physical, like I said, of a flesh of their own kind or of their own sort in that they have access to abilities we don't, but still physical, how could he enter Judas? Well, one day I'm thinking about Ezekiel and he's describing that where the cherubim moved, they had these ophanim right next to them, these wheels, right? Typically translated as wheels within wheels. And it specifies there that the spirit of the cherubim were in the ophanim. Their, their spirits are in these wheels. So then I told myself, okay, so cherubim have the ability to remove the spirits from their bodies and put them into something else. And well, there you go. There's how Satan could enter Judas, because that's an ability that cherubim have. 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 The history of our Earth is so different from what we can imagine. Enjoy the journey. The Smithsonian, that if they found out about a large skeleton somewhere, was to go get it. I'm going to assume at least one person is right, because if one person's right, it busts the paradigm. It all goes back to the fallen chair. And the problem with the modern day church, they have a very truncated view of the supernatural. This backdrop is just pregnant with all kinds of meaning associated with this Mount Hermon event. What are creatures? And this guy defects from the kingdom. That's a big deal. Let's go, Luke. Let's go. Nate, I can always tell when you're excited. Your voice gets real high pitched. Hey, you know, you got to get the juice going. I've been out of it for a while, and uh, I'm alive because a tornado came through my backyard two days ago. Oh, did you uh, Did you try to throw any trash in the trash can, Dad? Perfect. <laughs> no, like a literal tornado. Pretty impressive, during really, a tornado came through your yard. Did you hear about this? It was in Gallenberg. I don't know. Oh, I didn't even tell you, man. No, you didn't. Four blocks away, all the trees are just. Completely obliterated. No way. Yeah, they landed trees in houses. I almost was picking trees out of my 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 house. My, my oh, front, bro. my front room. What's coming next? COVID, tornadoes. Did your Amish built garage stand? Stand the it, test of it time. It did. Yeah. It's still here. They know what they're doing. If you want to start a podcast about the demons, you can have all the fun things come at you. Yeah, they're coming at it. They're coming at us. Poking, poking at you, punk. Look at that. That's a gateway drug right there. That is a gateway drug of a different of a different sort. <laughs> Those of you tooth and nail kids out there might know that one, but if you've been hooked on blurry creatures and you've taken the gateway drug into this weird space of cryptic creatures, Nephilim, ancient history, um, we're happy to have you on the ride. If you want to support the show, blurrycreatures.com slash members. This is a members-only episode. We're going to talk about seraphim, angels, uh, cherubim, you know, the differences between these two, the, all these creatures. Appreciate you guys supporting the show. Everybody out there who shares it with friends, texts it with friends. Can't do this without you. And certainly we can't do the podcast without all the members jumping on board. Once again, blurrycreatures.com slash members. And you get access to this show and many other shows. And we have a members chat coming up Monday, January 17th. Thank you guys so much for supporting Blurry Creatures. Happy to have you guys on the team. Thank you. <laughs>